Hello, hello. I am Elma Meyer, founder of Now Healing, and I'm talking with my dear friend, Rudy Hunter. Hello, Rudy. Welcome. Hi, Elma. Great to be with you. Always, always a pleasure to hang out with you. It's always just so beautiful to be in your presence. In this video, I'm going to be asking you about courage and strength, even when they seem impossible in the face of grief and loss and trauma and fear and freak out. So I'll just set the stage for a little bit. And then I'm going to ask you a, a question. And then uh, you're going to do, Rudy is going to do a healing process for us. I might do a little uh, opening healing process. And then Rudy's going to take us through a wonderful uh, healing. And then at the end, we'll tell you where you can get lots more from both Rudy and myself. Perfect. So to set the stage, Rudy, you recently went through one of the most difficult situations that humans can experience. The death of your spouse, George, your husband of 28, 28 years. Is that right? That's right. And ever since he passed away, what, a couple months ago? Um, and before then, during his last few months, you have been doing superhuman heroic work, not only to care for him, not only to somehow summon the energy to, you know, get yourself up and going every day, not only the huge life-changing existential crisis and grief of it for yourself, let alone the day-to-day -day crap and bureaucracy and just all the, the world crashing down on you, basically. But all the while, you have been doing even more amazing healing for others, for your clients, for the world. And especially, you know, after your initial grief at the end, you launched right into giving, giving, giving to the world. And, you know, the most amazing thing you did was that you took this disaster, this trauma, this incredible, stressful, grief-filled situation, and you transformed it into healing, not just for yourself, but for your audience and followers and clients. And I certainly got the benefit of, of a huge amount of it too, just by listening. And I'm sure that all of your folks watching will say the same. So you turned your grief into a blessing and a healing for the world without stuffing it down, without spiritual right. bypassing, without resorting to just think positive, just get through it, you know, without trying to numb the pain. Well, maybe you did try to numb the pain a little. Um, so you fully lived the pain and the tears and the neurology of grieving. So my main question is, how did you do that? Because as a healer, and I'm sure uh, the other healers watching this are going, when this happens to me and crap is happening all around us, when you feel you know, like the rug has been pulled out from under you. How do you have the strength to just show up in the world and go on? So many of us feel like we're just going to shut down. So Rudy, tell us, sure. how did you do it? In, in three, three easy steps. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to take us all back. Cause I'm, I'm more surprised than anybody else. Uh, years ago, uh, Actually, when I first was listening to you, ironically, um, I was um, helping my best friend. She was she was in the process of dying, and I helped her pass. I did not kill her. That's my that's my own that's my only joke. Um, and I was listening to your work at that point in time because I come from my pra my private practice with a nefarious past. The past for me was always opening and closing my practice when I got really, really angry because I had surrendered all my boundaries. I got taken advantage of again and again and again. And I, I basically flipped the world off and closed my practice, which is uh, how you do that if you want to cut off your nose to spite your face. And went underground and licked my wounds. And then eventually I would make my way out and rebuild my practice from zero because um, I'm nothing, nothing if not stubborn. And I did that again and again and again. So 
that impulse in me when George passed was pretty strong. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to deal with anything. I, I'm going to shut everything down and go lick my wounds like I always have because it's very familiar territory. But I remembered back to when my, my friend was dying. She, her death catalyzed for me a series of vows I made about my practice. Uh, as soon as she passed, I had a, what I call a come to Jesus meeting with myself and decided that I was never, never, ever going to uh, close my practice down again. I wasn't going to perpetuate that terrible cycle. Aside from being exhausting, it was pointless. Um, and that I would, on her death, make a series of vows about how I was going to perpetuate and run my business so that I could keep doing healing work and help the people and the animals that I was clearly here to help. So I had the impulse when George passed to shut everything down. And I remembered, oh, I said I wasn't going to do that. So crap, now I have to find a way to navigate this. And I got um, amidst the, the very sweet torrent of lovely, not terribly helpful advice. I got some gems from other people, uh, most of whom had lost to other folks. So it was from real experience. Uh, that helped me make a decision. And the, the decision I, I fundamentally came to was that I was going to be uh, even more fully surrendered than I already was. I felt I was at the, at the end of the surrender line. Ha! Um, because there was three months in hospital and, and rehab um, in, the, in the escapade with George. And we were doing nothing but surrendering. We were surrendering our time, all our choices uh, in order to get him back and home and for me to have my husband back and for us to rebuild over the long haul his functions so that we could have our life back. That, that was the plan. And uh, even that had to be surrendered. So I thought, okay, I'm done with surrender now. That, that's good. Uh, and then facing the choice to start, not even to start again, to continue my work, I had to basically pull my chest open, let myself get hurt by the natural grief that we're all destined to go through, and to deal with every single piece of feeling that was uncomfortable, teary, dreadful, and difficult. So one of the things that I don't like about Englishmen, because I'm, I am an Englishman, I, I have full right to say this, is that I've seen English men in particular uh, growing up in my family's history not deal with things brilliantly, and I despise them for it. <laughs> they're, they're a great model of suppression, alcoholism, violence and denial. And years ago, I decided that I was not going to be that kind of Englishman, that I wanted to be at the forefront, ready, willing, and able to take on whatever. And I had, I had no, no real tools to speak of at that time. I just, I was disgusted by the way I saw Englishmen not deal. So, so far I knew I had to stay. <laughs> I couldn't, check out. Couldn't really distract myself. I mean, yeah, there's been some cake, but, um, and that I had to do the thing that I teach people to do all the time, which is stay and not run away from the feelings and use tools to deal with the onslaught of feelings and in grief in particular and loss, they come every 12 seconds or so. They are relentless. And lots of things trigger you and there's lots of crying and screaming and, you know, all the rest of it. So I'd set myself up with a series of vows to not avoid this and to get ready to deal with staying here and being clear enough, not only to help myself, but to help all the folks that I'm here to help. Because one of my vows way back when was, isn't it obvious by now that I'm here to do this work? And yeah, so 
in a very real sense, I didn't have a, I didn't have much of a choice because I'd boxed myself in <laughs> years ago. So it was either, you know, lie on the couch and eat ice cream, um, which is good for 10 minutes, but, but beyond that, not, not so much. Uh, or find a way to get up, get to work and get focused and use what this is to the best of my ability. That's, that's the headspace of it. And the rest was, I have a lot of tools I've produced that are made for trauma, for PTSD, for really difficult situations that we don't want to feel, we don't want to deal with. And I have a library of those. That's, that's my work. So those are the very things I leaned into. And I don't know why it always surprises a lot of folks, but I actually use the tools I produce for myself. I, I love get to get asked that question because it makes me think like, would I be using just like secret stuff and like making stuff for other people? No, it's, that's what I use. So I lean into my own work, which was, which has been the only real, my own work and great friends have been the only ports in a storm for me because my life got torn apart and my husband's gone. So there isn't a lot left um, to lean into. So that's the doing of it. Um, and when you're in a situation, when I'm in a situation that is really packed, I pay extra attention to what's going on. So a lot of the tools I've produced and the, the recordings and the, the help come from nose to the immediate environment that I'm stuck in and I pay attention to how I and other widows and widowers are because I started interviewing widows and widow, widowers the next day. I wanted to know. I didn't have any data for this. I didn't plan for this. So I wanted to know how other people navigated it and where their head was at and the tricks that they had and things they did. And then I started paying extra close attention to not only the waves of grief and loss and how they function, but what else energetically is going on in the system that keeps pouring inf in inflammation and fire on this thing. Because there are some folks who don't ever stop grieving. And it's not something I recommend. <laughs> I got a great piece of advice from someone very early on, uh, another, another gay man who had lost um, two husbands. It's like I was stunned when I talked to him. I thought I was just going to talk to him about losing his current husband. He's been through it twice, and he, he has a spectacular piece of advice. He says, of course, grieve. Find out how you do it. I got that great piece of advice from lots of folks. Do it your own way. Which, you know, when you're stuck in it, it's like, oh, great, something else I have to figure out. Uh, you don't actually have to figure it out. It's, it's done for you. That is the way you grieve. But his advice was grieve, but don't live there. And that is a sage piece of advice. Because I know lots of folks personally who are still living in that same neighborhood. And it's been years and years and years and years. And they have made a choice not to leave that neighborhood. They will they will be in that place when they pass. There's nothing wrong with it if you have to do it that way, but it does stunt the possibility of more for you. And I have stuff I want to do. So um, it, was, it was a great piece of advice. I don't know if that answers the question or uh, gets... Yeah, that answers a huge chunk of the question. Part B of the question would be um, when I said, how did you do it? That that was a, a tremendous, beautiful overview of how do you, how you did it. Now I want to ask you about the moment to moment. How did you get through, you know, when it shows up every 12 seconds and yeah. when it's a particularly gnarly wave of grief and you're feeling like, I can't, I can't handle it. I can't do it. You know, when, when you're really shut down, do yeah. you have any 
advice for folks on that? And this applies not just to if you lost a loved one, it applies to, you know, reading the newspaper about the latest shooting or, you know, thinking about your bunny rabbit from 10 years ago, or it it could be just the state of the world. So when you're in that state of, I can't handle this, I, I know all of your tools have stuff for that, but any, any specifics on that one? Absolutely. I got, I got a few. Um, every morning for donkey's years now, um, I get up, I make a big cup of coffee. I go sit outside in all kinds of weather, sometimes with blankets and 12 hats on because it's freezing here in the Northeast. Um, and I go chant for a few minutes because it's very helpful. And then I do energy work. Uh, and I specifically go after what's up in consciousness for me that day. I got a great piece of advice years ago, which was go after your problems before they go after you. And that piece of advice has stood me in great stead. And my mornings now, no matter what's going on, even with all of this heaviness, it still feels like a game show for me. I, well, I guess I've moved it into being like a game show to keep it as light as possible, but there's a great sense of accomplishment pointing work at getting ahead of the problem because it's, it's very empowering. And one of the things in big events, like what I've just gone through, and it doesn't have to just be grief is helplessness. This helplessness is paralyzing mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, biochemically. Um, So that helpless territory is a dangerous place to not only get stuck in, but to spend much time in. So you want to shorten your time in helplessness as much as you can. Sometimes stepping away from whatever's going on in your current helplessness and doing some task does not have to be spiritually evolved, like organizing your cutlery drawer or banding together rubber bands or sorting out your mudroom or taking the garbage out and going for a walk, whatever it is, some other task neurologically is just as effective as processing out where you are currently stuck and it will unstick the other place that we know that as people, but when we are helpless and we're in a bundle on the floor crying, we never think "Hmm, that cutlery drawer could be my salvation (laughs) because it really could be. It's a start. The next, the next thing to know, it's an enormous secret and it's very, very hard to remember. And it's only from doing emotional work with myself and clients for uh, decades, (laughs) for for a very long time, um, that I can tell you this with full authority. And as soon as I tell you, you will forget it. Not not you, Elmo already knows, but we, we as people forget it because it cannot possibly We think it can't possibly help us, but it's one of the ways out of this. That is everything that's going on in the story. I lost my husband. My house burned down. My house didn't burn down. I'm just giving you examples. My dog died. I lost my job. I can't find a job. The world is a horrible place and I'm terrified 24-7, whatever it is. Every single part of that story is made up of beliefs and ideas and circumstances, here's the key, that are only feelings, period. This is the last thing we'll remember when we're upset. So I encourage folks to start noticing this when you're not as upset as usual or when you're having a good day because it doesn't matter if the story or the spin is negative or positive everything going through your head about it is only a story. It's only a feeling. And the great news is those feelings can be changed and they can be changed pretty quickly and with great aplomb. I will tell you if you want a really fast way 
to just bust a feeling, I, I mean, I've got, I have too many YouTube videos up, but there's a YouTube video called Mobius, um, what is it? Mobius Strip Tease. That's, a, that's a, one of my shortest videos where I don't yak on endlessly. You take, you take your feeling to that, it will undo it for you. It will start to pull the threads out of it. And after a while, when you get facile with this idea and you keep remembering that what's happening is based on the, the current feeling, the current weather that's going through you, suddenly there's the beginning of wiggle room. Does it change the external reality? Nope. My husband's still gone and I still miss him. But that every 12 second grief or that pang of nausea or whatever it is that rolls through you is the next feeling about whatever's going on. So it's a very anti-Pollyanna way to go after stuff because you meet the feeling head on, you deal, and it actually lets go of you. You go through this, you go through the process, but it's the thing that actually frees you when the, when the feeling starts to dissipate. That's the biggest tool. And well, that's the biggest tool for me anyway. On bad days, the, f the feelings, whatever they are, they're coming too fast and too furious and everything looks gray and it's, and it's a crappy day. On moderate and good days, they come at a slightly lesser rate and I'm aware that I need to deal with them as they come or I end up being the kind of Englishman I hate who is uh, drinking his way into oblivion and denying he has a heart or feelings or an emotional life. <laughs> Sorry, English dudes. I'm sure there's four or five of you out there that are lovely. But I'm going to be the most lovely. That's, that's really my, my challenge to myself. You are Hugh and, Grant. You are Hugh okay. Grant. Thank you. I, I do what I can. Right? The, other, the other part of this, because this is really messy work, there's, there are most of us, most of us are terrified to not only just to fall apart because it's painful, but the, the layer of shellac over that that makes it excruciating is to be seen to fall apart by other people. Most of us are terrified. I, however, am not. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because what other real choice is there? I'll tell you what the other choices are. And hopefully this will veer you away from making that choice to be seen to be holding it all together so valiantly. Drinking, sex, drugs, online shopping, fighting, kicking your dog, telling people, people you love horrible things, and the list of awful other stuff. Those are the real other choices. And those kick in automatically as soon as we start to suppress and as, as soon as we start to put this idea that it's important that I'm seen to be all together and handling it beautifully. Um, and <laughs> my friends and, and lots of my clients too know that there's been long stretches of time. I, I did a series of <laughs> shows you how willing, how willing I am to show, to be seen showing up naked. When George was in ICU, I, I had some clients who I, I had rearranged so many times and my schedule was, I was basically spending eight hours a day in the hospital with George and driving three hours to get there. And I had no time. And I, I love my clients. I could not bump these folks. So I found a park bench outside of ICU and uh, brought my computer and we did session work. And, you know, I did my, my opening disclaimers like, this is not the normal environment and I might have to go if I get like a sudden text, but, and I told them I'm outside ICU and my hubby's having a hard time. And I, I nearly brought myself to tears confessing that to clients and those clients were magnificent. Um, and that's been my experience. Most of the people that, I've been fragile and vulnerable with and a big hot mess with have been 
just graceful, kind, magnificent. Um, nobody's been a dick, which, uh, you know, the, the law of averages said there's got to be somebody, but, you know, so far, so good. Everybody's been pretty uh, amazing. Yeah. And, and if that was you letting it all hang out, I mean, yeah. to me, it looked like you were the person in the world who handled it the best, not because you were trying to keep it together, but because you were being, you were flowing with the waves of, of grief and then coming out of it and going back in. And it just, it was, you know, you should write the manual on how to deal with this. And you have with a lot of- that's your, what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and for our viewers at home, Elma is one of the people I am, I was frequently a hot mess in front of who uh, was an, a magnificent support through all of this. And yeah, that that is how grief and trauma and other really powerful feelings, they, they feel very much like a tidal wave every time they come. There's a big whoosh and, and I can't actually imagine now trying to hold that off or hold that back because I know now from very, very painful experience that when that ebbs, it's in the ebb when it lets go, there's a, there's a sudden relief from the force of the intensity of it. And remember, it's just a feeling. So it can be a feeling that'll take you down to your knees or knock you out or make you want to nap for three hours, but it's still does have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And we have ways to navigate those feelings mostly by opening ourselves up so that we're not trying to hold back the ocean. I mean, that's, right. you and I have spent a lot of time and and at the California ocean. What is the California, the Pacific, that's the, the one. The Pacific. The Pacific, that's what they call it. You and I have sat for hours and some of my fondest memories of just we we talk for a bit. We'd sit for a long time, but I always think about trying to hold back that force because that's that's what really powerful emotions feel like. You know, when you're in them, you know that. Yeah. Well, let's do some energetic processes Great. to show everybody um, and and neurologically, as you like to work so so beautifully bring in the sense that um, this is not something to be feared. And even if it is something to be feared, here's how to deal with it. Great. So go ahead. What I want to do is I want to make a confession that the work we're going to do is going to go in the back door past where the mind wants to control everything. Cause the mind wants to run, mind wants to run everything, but the mind wants to run this in spades. So we don't get hurt anymore. That's the big, that's the big force is like, Oh, no more, no more hurt. We can't take it. No pain. So, <laughs> right. No, no pain. Hate it. So we get that about the mind. What uh, Elma's going to do an alignment for a couple of things that I'm going to work on in a little more depth, but, we're not going into reason with any of these things. We're not using principles of the mind at all. There's a process for taking, even if you've got a thimble full of courage, even if it's just literally that much of taking this and helping it expand by its own weight and measure. And that's done in the body in a couple of different places. It's done by your kidneys and your kidneys sit right under the, the 12th rib, your lowermost rib. This is why you see people who are tired uh, cup their hands over their, over their back. You usually see them at bus stops. Like, oh, my God, I had an exhausting day. That's like kidney stance, right? You're, they're trying to rewarm their kidneys and get, get life, more life force flowing through them. And the kidneys are direct controllers of fear. So the happier our kidneys are, the less fear we have. It's a very fight or flight. It's either one way or the other. And then there's a very complicated muscle. You'll have to talk to your massage therapist or, you know, give it a Google called the psoas muscle. And 
it's, it's the major connecting muscle between your torso and your legs. And it is reactive as hell, which means you can hear a tiny piece of bad news or disappointment and your psoas will go, oh, no, I'm freaking out. I'm, I'm, I'm a mess. So it's, it's very fussy and it's very fast. And it's, it's connected directly to the kidneys in function. And it's the muscle that helps you run away or freeze. It actually is the muscle right at the heart of fight or flight. So we're going to do a process called gird your loins, which is a, it's an old timey expression for trussing up the psoas, actually. Uh, your loins are the psoas muscle. Because I like old timey references, they're quaint. So we're going to energetically stitch together the function of the kidneys and the psoas muscle. I'm going to do that through the heart. So we're staying very far away from the mind. The mind, we heard the mind. No more pain. Got it. This is, this is about no more pain. So this process will very much help spread that thimble full of courage that always lives in you so that it, it's more available. Beautiful. So let's get started. I'm just going to sort of uh, open the doorways for this a little bit, and then Rudy will go into the, the uh, stuff that he just talked about. So let's all get ready to shift and change and align right now. A great way to do that is to just breathe into your center. Feel the breath going from your nose or mouth down into your lungs and your heart area. And you can feel it going even all the way down to your gut and your pelvic floor, even though technically it isn't doing that. But you can feel the energy of your breath energizing your center. And you can close your eyes if you want, or you don't have to close your eyes. Um, just maintain a, a soft focus. And then with this centered place, let's assuage the mind a little bit. Uh, and let's allow the mind to just let go of the duality of I'm going to freak out when something bad happens or I have freaked out and I can handle it. I can handle it with strength or courage or whatever you want to call it, or I can't handle it. I'm going to freak out and completely fall apart into nothingness. So those two sort of extremes, what we're going to do is bring them both to center. And you don't have to worry about how that's happening. We're just simply observing that it's happening or commanding that it's happening. We're going to align those extremes with center now. So that your mind can remember later that yes, you are going to possibly freak out. And yes, you are going to possibly have courage, strength, even if just a thimbleful. So that sense that your uh, awareness of those two possibilities is centered. And we're going to align that for past, present, and future. So that state is always available at your center anywhere on your vertical center, you could use your heart, you could use your gut, whatever you want. And you won't necessarily have that same thought or that same awareness. You might have a completely different awareness, but if you want to find that state, go to your center. So that was just a very simple uh entry into the portal of what Rudy's going to do for you right now. So Rudy, awesome. take it away. Thank you. So let's take care of a whole bunch of business the easiest way possible. Alma's done beautiful work to help get us, get us here already. 
So you can work with your eyes open or closed. If you opt to close your eyes, make sure you are safe and sound. That's paramount. I want you to give yourself permission, your mind specifically, to let go and focus on anything at once. You can think about dreary laundry lists or doing the laundry, or you can think about puppies and kittens and lasagna, anywhere it wants to go. So I'm going to go quiet for a little bit, for a couple of minutes. During that quiet time, if you find that the mind is coming back to try and wreak havoc, stir, stir something up, or gain control over what we're trying to do, just give it permission again to travel and focus on whatever it likes. All right? We'll sit quietly for a minute or two, and I'll let you know when we're done. There we go. Wherever your attention has drifted, with eyes still open or closed as you were, put your attention now on anything that you're aware of where, that you feel hopeless or helpless about, or where you feel you don't have enough courage. You're going to just rest your attention there for a few more seconds. One more place for your attention. There's a really strong impulse to want to know what to do or try to figure it out. Put your attention on that idea, wanting to know what to do or trying to figure it out. Just rest your mind there. That's just perfect. Very gently, very easily, slide on back from wherever you were. Come on back to here and now. And once you arrive back to here and now, just take um, three or four seconds, scan through yourself, notice whatever you're aware of. And there's no wrong answer to this. You just notice if you're aware of anything new, maybe something arrived, maybe something left. Maybe you just sat quietly. But check things like how your body feels, how cranked up or not you feel. You'll find every single time you do this, if you pay attention to it, there's a very strong pronounced shift in your nervous system to more rest, to more ease, even though you got stuff going on. Both are possible. And you can always come back and do this as often as you like. Good. Beautiful. Thank you. I am in a zone of peace and calm. Good. Very, very lovely. 
And uh, it reminds me of the old um, Mad Magazine, What Me Worry state of mind. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember that, but. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take obscure references for 300. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rudy. That Thanks was so great. Much. And I did feel my uh, loins and my sort of psoas and uh, gut area relaxing. And I had been holding a lot of tension there, which is pretty habitual for me. And I was like, ah. So thank you for that. And my experience, of course, might be completely different from what you all experienced. So, and that's- yeah, one, of the, one of the nice things about doing this work is that if you come back and redo it, as long as, as, long as we sort of remember beginner mind, which is you do your best not to have any expectations. I mean, we all know that the last time you felt X, Y, Z, we, we'll have that. Oh, maybe I'll feel that again. But if you just show up and do the work, your system, everybody's system, when they redo this, will take what's pressing and important and start to change that. So it can be a new experience every time. And it, and that's kind of how you know you're doing it right, is if it is a new experience every time. So right. that's, that's the way it goes. So I want to just recap the thing that Rudy uh, taught me that is so vitally important, which is to get ahead of your stuff. Uh, it's really great to have a sort of a, a foundation before you get into trouble, before you get into the turbulent pain or emotions. At, as Rudy says, what what is your saying? Get ahead of your stuff before, what yeah. is your phrase? Get ahead of your uh, problems before they, they get ahead of you. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. That is that is a deep truth. Yeah. So we are going to wrap this up, but I want to let everyone know where you can get more. You can get a lot more Rudy and I'll have him tell you his, uh, his websites and places where you can um, join his mailing list and, and stuff like that. And let me tell you mine first, then I'm going to let him do his. Um, my website is nowhealing.com. And there's a process on that is related to this courage uh, uh, alignment that we were doing. If you go to nowhealing.com slash courage, you will find a written, a brief set of written instructions that you can do yourself to get into this state. Uh, and then you can also sign up there for uh, one of my healing uh, processes called a year of free alignments, where I'll send you an email uh, every day for a few days, and then once a week for a year with free healing alignments for you. So who doesn't want a year of free healing? So uh, go to nowhealing.com slash courage, do that process. And then there you can also sign up for the free alignments, nowhealing.com browse around, have fun. All right, Rudy, tell us where we can get more of you. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, the, the year of uh, alignments is awesome. Uh, I don't know if you've been able to figure this out, but we're good chums and we love each other's work. Uh, I guess we should have spoiler alerted that at the beginning. Yeah, but, we should have, uh, but it's, it's obvious, silly. right? <laughs> I think it's obvious. Well, well, mutual admiration society. So the best way to get in the information loop with me is go to one of the sites I'm going to tell you. There are too many. Uh, first is rudyhunter.com. Next is huntershealingcalls.com. And then the third one is the ashworkerstraininghub.com. Sign up at any one of those websites. You'll get into the information loop. I, um, I produce a lot of material, uh, just like Elma does, to help folks and if you're in the information loop, you get access to all of that. There's always something new in the works, uh, especially during times of <laughs> stress, trauma, and difficulty. Um, 
and the Ash Workers Training Hub is is a training site for folks who want to work with other people and themselves, including animals. Uh, so if you have a if you have a leaning towards that, you'll see what kind of a a nutty animal lover I am, and uh, that's that's a good thing to go check out. But as Elma says, go browse around. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but if I am, and you stay in the information loop, uh, you'll be very richly rewarded. So it's my true pleasure and true calling to make this work available. Um, I know that's the same with Elma too. I, I try not to speak for her, but uh, I can't help myself. So. <laughs> go ahead, you're reading my mind. There you go. <laughs> So yeah, everyone, please uh, share this with your friends who could use this work. If you happen to know anybody, although it's probably very unlikely that you know anyone that needs help with grief, trauma, stress, you probably don't have people like that in your life, right? But if you do, please share this with them and please sign up for Rudy's uh, newsletters and because he'll give you tons of stuff. Sign up for my year of free alignments. And um, Rudy, you got any closing words here? Yeah, uh, a great piece of advice, not just for grief, not just for loss, not just for PTSD. Please stop beating the crap out of yourself and go gentle, gentle, gentle. Thank that's you. My, that's my sage advice. That's what I was gonna say too. Yeah, Damn it. because because uh, you know it's just so easy to beat the crap out of yourself, especially if you should know better. Yes. Uh, you know. Yeah. One of the, one of the secrets about that, honestly, is. If you have a big, empathic, sweet, open heart, uh, you're our people, and we know you because it takes one to know one. So just be gentle. Be kind to yourself. That's be it. kind and gentle to yourself, <laughs> yes. And, yeah. and we love you. Lots of love. I hope this work... Uh, opens things up for you and opens up the flow to more and more wholeness, which is infinite. All right. Thanks everyone for being here. Thank you, Rudy. What thanks. a beautiful pleasure. Thank you for your heroic work. Thank you. Love you to bits. Bye everyone. Bye.